Coming up this week on Ralph and Vicky's Archer's Choice. We're up in the Arctic, tundra. I've hunted musk ox up in Quebec and other provinces before, so I kind of had an idea, but you know, going to a new place on my own was a little intimidating. Welcome to the Archer's Choice. This is our 18th season. 18 <laughs> years of this, and you know what? It hasn't changed. 24-7. It just, it is what it is. And you know what? We have another great season ahead of us. And the first one, i And because of this, I figured we'd start the season off. I'm sending her north by herself. He I did. Had, I had he a, sent me up to I needed an escape. It was just, really? oh, it was horrible. That's why I went? The I thought it was because I was able to go hunt muskox in the warmth. Yeah. It was. It was awesome. I'm going to head up to Nunavut this week. Nunavut. Nunavut, up to Hennig Lake Adventures, and go hunt muskox. Let's go. Muskox. Her. It's a long trip up here. I had to fly from Chicago to Winnipeg, spend the night in Winnipeg. We went from Winnipeg to Churchill to Rankin Inlet to Chesterfield Inlet, and then finally to Baker Lake. We are in Rankin Inlet. We're on our way up to Baker Lake. Um, we're going to hunt. We're going to hunt muskox, and now we're at the Giant Anookshuk, which is really kind of cool. Look at this. Cool is when you look at the buildings around here, they have so many bright colors that I don't know why, but it's it's cheery. Maybe they do it so that they are cheerful during those long winters or something. I have no idea. We've made it to Baker Lake. We have one more flight to go. We've been on four already today. That right there, I believe, is number five to make it to camp for most of so. On the flight in, one of the things that you notice the most up here in the Arctic, up in the tundra, is lakes everywhere, water ponds everywhere, some ridges, lots of boulders, I mean rocks everywhere. And as you're flying in, you know, I'm looking for muskox and caribou and I didn't see a one. I mean, there's no doubt we should have seen them from the air and I honestly don't know how we didn't. So landing was landing. We made it here to camp on Baker Lake. Russ just met the plane. We had a interesting landing on this hillside here. Interesting is all I'll put on it in that way. Um, it'll be interesting when we take off of here in a week. But hey, camp is 300 yards down that hill. Baker Lake is a small settlement in none of it on mainland Canada. Located nearly 200 miles inland from the Hudson Bay, it is near the nation's geographic center and is notable for being the Canadian Arctic's sole inland community. 
None of it is also home to one of the most prehistoric looking mammals that walks the earth, the muskox, which in the Inuit languages of Canada translates to the bearded one. <laughs> I'm hunting up here with Hennick Lake Adventures. The situation is it's the first time that they're really offering a fall muskox hunt, and I wanted to try it. I've hunted muskox before. You don't realize how tough you're, the guides and, and the people, the Inuits up here, what they deal with every day, every year, I mean, I know that I don't think I could be, I'm strong enough for one trip, but I don't think I could live up here. I mean, look at, we're in a tent with a heater and there's ice on the floor. Back in 2005, when we went up to Victoria Island and hunted muskox, it was the beginning of April and we headed out on sleds behind the snow machines. And one of the things that I remember the most is that how everything was just white. The sky matched the ground everything it was kind of almost a vertigo kind of a situation we spotted a group of muskox the bull went off the side you go after that bull you just keep walking and walking after him finally he's just going to stand his ground and that's exactly what the one did for me when i was out there many years ago and presented me the shot On that trip, they told us, oh, if it's cold, you should have thought about coming out in the fall. You know, it took me 12 years later to finally do it, and I did it, so. <laughs> Well, it's the first morning here in Muskox Camp, and um, we got in yesterday afternoon. We got to wait 12 hours to hunt, which is more than 12 hours now. Landed up on the top of that mountainside yesterday. And it was a little rough, but we got down here, everyone got everything ready to go, had a good night's sleep, and we are heading out. We're up here in Nunavut hunting muskox, and it's going to be like 70 degrees. It's so different than the last time I came up to hunt muskox, where it was like negative 30, so kind of excited. I'll probably sweat to death today, but hey, it's all good. Our guide's name is Peter, and he's born and raised right here in Baker Lake. So you live up here in Baker Lake, or yeah. do you? I've lived here all my life. Really? That's cool. That is. If they do once in a while, we'll go down to like one of the bigger towns, like Winnipeg or something within Manitoba, to do some supply shopping. But basically, everything he does is right there in Baker Lake. With an area of 729 square miles, Baker Lake provides a great deal of land to cover. But it isn't long until Vicky and Peter spot something. Well, spot our first muskox. Looks like there's about eight of them, maybe. Maybe more. Oh, there might be more. There's another little one. I think these are all cows. With young. As we're going around one point, we actually noticed some muskox, and Peter's like, they look like cows and calves. But you know what? Let's go ahead and see. Let's get a little closer because there's a big one in there. Let's go see if that's a bull. We beached the boat and we went out on our first dog. All right, let's do it. I know the terrain, we're up in the Arctic. I know it's tundra. I've hunted muskox up in, you know, in Quebec and other other provinces before so I kind of had an idea but you know going to a new place on my own was a little intimidating. We'll have to watch our wind because our wind is blowing that way. So we need to go back that way so our wind don't blow out.
As we sat there, you know, we're just looking at them, figuring out what's going on. They all bedded down. There's probably 14 to 16 of them, and they all just started bedding down within 70 yards in front of us. It was really kind of a cool experience. They had no idea we were sitting there, none whatsoever. And Peter looked at us and said, you know what, let's go ahead, let's get out of here, let's not disturb them, and let's go back to the boat and find a bull. Vicki and guide Peter have just put on a successful stalk on a group of muskox just off the lake. After getting within a range of 70 yards, the two realize there are no mature bulls in the herd, so move on to a new location. We just got done on our first stalk, which was awesome. A lot of cows and little ones though, so Peter saw some across the bay here, across the lake here, so we're gonna head over there and see what we can see from over there. It's kind of fun. That was so cool getting that close to them and they didn't even know, they bedded down in front of us. And now there's a bunch of them up there. Got back into the boat, went across the lake, and there weren't just the few that Peter had seen, the hillside was covered with muskox. There had to be 40 or 50 muskox in this hillside. It was crazy. I never thought that's what it would look like. I figured, you know, when, we, when I've hunted them before and it was winter, you came up on a group of maybe 12 or 14 and that was it. And right now we have this hillside of muskox in front of us. Like bulls, cows, little ones, everything and they're all right there just meandering around the hillside do you see all of them there's a pile of them oh that's more than 25 there goodness oh not much of a blind but uh if we walk behind each other yeah we could maybe make something happen well there's a shack down there on the left side of them too Oh my gosh, that's a bunch of muskox. He told me they're gonna look like black spots on, on the mountainside and that didn't really make sense to me because I honestly thought they'd be more gray because the ones that we've hunted before looked more gray. But sure enough, when you see a muskox on a hillside from the water, there are black dots all over it. And we're just kind of going in slowly. We don't want to startle them and just see if we can do some glassing, see if there's a good bowl in there and then we'll make our game plans to figure out what we're gonna do but there's a lot of eyeballs in that group, so we'll see what happens. We figured out a plan of attack. We spotted a couple good bulls in this herd, and Peter said, we're gonna go around the cove, we'll you know, beach the boat, and we'll go from there, and we'll see how we can get it. We had the wind in our favor once again, and that, that was how we decided to go off after him. Peter said, I don't think we should take the decoy, because he's, he's nervous that we're gonna get charged. He said, also, I should bring the gun. He is very concerned. He's born and raised here on Baker Lake, and he is worried for our safety because there's so many of them that should one charge, who knows what's gonna happen. So Peter had the gun on him, and we were ready to go. The muskox are in this valley between that other little one. We noticed that some of the muskox that we had seen in the valley, because we were walking along the ridge side and in the valley, they're already up ahead of us and they're walking that valley up to the next hillside. So we tried to hurry up a little bit quicker, staying low using that ridge to our advantage so that we weren't skylining at all. Is that a bull? It's a bull. We got a little further up on the side of this ridge line and we spotted another bull and he's right there and he's not that far. So we stopped, we glass, I ranged him and he's like, he's about 50 yards out and he's just standing there looking around. Thought, you know what, well, we need to get a little closer than that. He has no idea where we're at and he started walking. And Peter said, he said, you know what, go to them, Vicky. You go get them. And that's exactly what we did. Thank you, Lord. Oh, 35 was when I arranged him. 
I have my I have it set at 40 because I figured he was gonna take a couple steps and <sighs> that was off Peter. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Thanks. We were great. Oh my gosh. Mm. <sighs> that was awesome. Oh my gosh. Peter couldn't believe it. I was in shock. I mean, it's not two hours into our hunt. And I'm tagged out. I never, seriously, in all my life, I mean, I practiced over and over and over, so I would make the perfect, at least a 50-yard shot on that animal. And I got to 35 on him, and he honestly, if I hadn't stood up, he probably wouldn't have even known we were there. I've, was... been, I've been hunting since I was five. Yeah. My father taught me all the tricks. I always use the landscape to your advantage, he says. That was amazing. Because of the terrain we were in and the big rock, it was, a, it was almost like, a perfect place to bow hunt, to stalk and bow hunt a muskox. This was just out of this world. I really didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know if it was gonna happen with my bow or not. And within two hours, that answer was totally finished and answered. Having just taken a mature muskox with her bow, Vicki prepares to recover the animal with Peter, her guide. Well, we watched him go down, went back to the boat, grabbed the rest of our gear, our knives, everything else, and a sled, and let's go get the muskox. Goodness. Hey. Oh my gosh. Look at him. Oh, wow. Dang. First morning out, it's a beautiful day. This is not what it's supposed to feel like right now. We're not supposed to have black flies. It's not supposed to be 70 degrees, but it is. And I just shot an amazing muskox. I never figured I'd be up here. Never thought it would be this warm. This is amazing. This is a, this is a prehistoric animal. They're so cool. And my understanding now is they're actually overpopulating and they're, they're pushing the caribou out of the areas. You're telling me that the, the muskox population has gotten like just yeah, it's too overpopulating, big. and uh, they're they're intimidating the caribou. Yeah. Uh, they're bullies with the caribou, so the caribou don't want to be near them. No, they and the caribou is what you guys live off. Yeah, that's of. I our mean, diet. That's... Caribou's our diet. Yeah. So, so you need more of these hunted, huh? Yeah. Because yeah. you guys don't really care much to hunt them, or no? You would rather hunt caribou, yeah. you said. <laughs> I don't blame you. I can't thank you guys enough. I mean, this is just. Do your hunts usually only last a morning? <laughs> that was crazy. Back at camp, the meat processing has begun. Fellow hunter Russ helps Vicky process the quartered muskox, which is no small task. This big bodied mammal averages a weight of 630 pounds, with adult males reaching up to 900 pounds. Some of the meat we had already had to ship out because it was getting so warm. They had a boat come out from Baker Lake and we loaded everything that was already processed at that time, all of the meat. We helped, you know, help rust the bone the meat, get everything ready, and then when the boat came out, everything went back into that boat and they took it back to town because it was cooler than normal. Normally you don't have to worry about hurrying up and getting everything back. Usually it's cool enough that nothing's gonna spoil. And this time, we had to make sure we had it back into town. It's all everything's back in the freezer or else the meat's already been distributed at this point. That was awesome. Thank really you. proud of you. Thank you. It was a lot of fun up there. We had a great time. The weather was incredible. It was. We. I mean, it was, well, okay, so the first day, I mean, I was done hunting the first morning. So the rest of the time, we were in camp. And the weather got really kind of cranky after that, and the wind picked up, and we couldn't go out cranky. on the lake and everything else. Well, that was me being nice. And, you know, so, I mean, actually, I was extremely blessed that I was able to fill out my tag that first day and get all the meat back. And, actually, I just helped out in camp the rest of the week, helped cut up the rest of the meat and all. So but you I, were the camp? I, I helped out in camp. Behave yourself. Hey, you know what? After 18 years, you would think you'd behave yourself. Do you behave yourself? No. Okay. Hey, we want to we wanna thank you guys for watching this week's Archer's Choice. We'll see you next week, same time. Same channel. Right here on the, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.